Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the stages of change model, also known as the trans-theoretical model. So the model has six steps that can help you change your behaviours for the better. If you've ever made a New Year's resolution, you'll know how hard they can be to stick with. In fact, according to one survey, only 9% of people who make resolutions successfully keep them. Behavioural scientists have found that people who use the stages of change model to make a behaviour change are more successful than those that don't. The model was originally published in the early 80s by James Prochaska and Carlo Di Clemente. It was based on their research as to why certain people could quit smoking on their own. Now the model is an intentional change model and that means that it can help change your behaviour only when you want to change. It's also a cyclical model, meaning that you may need to loop through the model many times for a behaviour change to stick permanently. Now, when you use the model, you may find that you're stuck on a certain step of the model for months at a time before you're ready to move to the next step, or you may stumble, relapse, or have to start the process all over again. Now, both these things are perfectly normal. Lasting change does not happen overnight, Often progress comes in fits and starts, and you make progress jerkily, taking two steps forward and one step backward. Now you enter the model at the pre-contemplation stage, but you can exit and re-enter the model at any stage once you've begun using the model. Let's take a closer look at each step of the model. The first stage is pre-contemplation, and this is characterized by having no intention to take action in the foreseeable future. You may not believe or understand that your current behaviour is damaging in this stage. You may underestimate the benefits of changing and overestimate the cost of changing too. Previous fails attempt to change your behaviour may leave you feeling demoralised and not believing in your ability to change. So how do you move to the next stage? Well, unfortunately, when you're in the pre-contemplation stage, you're not aware you have a problem, so there isn't really anything you can do to move forward. Moving to the next stage will happen when something causes you to shift your perspective. Maybe you receive a test result or see someone else talking about their successful change. You are in the second stage, contemplation, when you're aware of the need to change but aren't quite ready to change just yet. In this stage, although you're becoming increasingly aware of the benefits of changing, the costs still seem too great. On the one hand, you feel you have to give up something you think you enjoy or something that you think is part of your identity. But on the other hand, you may be beginning to experience some adverse consequences from your existing behaviour. So how do you move to the next stage? This will happen when you decide you want or need to change, but you're unsure how to do it. One way to encourage this is to perform low commitment actions such as creating a vision board of what you want your life to look like, or seeking out the stories of others who have successfully made the change. You're in the third stage, preparation, when you believe that taking action can change your life for the better and you have started to actively investigate how to proceed. You may have even begun to make small changes in anticipation of the bigger change to come. If you aim to get fitter, for example, you may already be taking the stairs at work rather than the elevator. So how do you move to the next stage? Well, this stage is all about removing the obstacles to taking action. So some of the steps you can take include committing to a start date to begin taking action, writing down your short-term and long-term goals, creating a plan to follow, joining a support group or finding a coach that can help you, Developing if-then scenarios so you have strategies to mitigate problems as they arise after you start taking action. Now, the fourth stage, action. You enter this stage when you begin to execute your plan. You've started to build momentum and over time, the small changes you're making daily will get easier and make a huge difference. How do you move to the next stage? Well, the stages of change model says that you're ready to move to the maintenance stage after six months in the action phase. 
Steps that can help this are focus on your progress, not perfection. So doing this gives you a better chance of maintaining your motivation to keep taking action. Reward your mini milestones on the path to six months of action. Find better ways to lower the barrier to positive action and increase the barrier to negative action. So for example, if you want to lose weight, perhaps get your workout done first thing in the morning while you're motivated. At the same time, you could start turning down invites to social events for a while, so increasing the barriers to those. You enter the fifth stage, maintenance, when you've remained in the action stage for at least six months. That means you su you've successfully navigated issues that could have caused you to revert to your old behaviours. Now, in this stage, you're increasingly confident you can maintain your new behaviour, but you still need to avoid the temptation of reverting to your old behaviours. How do you move from this phase to the next phase? Well, you may need to spend several years, unfortunately, in the maintenance stage before you progress from believing you can maintain your new behaviour to knowing you can maintain it. To help you, continue to reward yourself for the tremendous progress you're making. Look at any challenges to maintaining your new behaviour as an opportunity to develop a new coping strategy. And finally, take on new challenges to reinforce the wider benefits of the new behaviour. The final stage is termination and you're in this stage when you have no desire to return to your previous behaviour and your new behaviour is completely integrated into your life and identity. Until you reach this termination stage, it's common to slip back a stage or two or relapse. So what do you do if you relapse? Well, if you do slip up, then remember to be kind to yourself and get straight back to your new behaviour as soon as you possibly can. The changes you've already made are not lost and you are building momentum and an upward spiral of progress towards the life you want. And you can see that upward spiral represented in the diagram. Finally, recognise what caused you to slip and establish a new coping mechanism that will enable you to handle similar situations in the future in a better way. Let's take a look at an example. So for this example, I want you to imagine that you are middle-aged, working in a sedentary job and not getting any other exercise. So here's what a journey through a successful loop of the stages of change model might look like for you. And it's worth noting that this example is overly simplified and that in reality, change is messy, takes time, and often involves numerous resets. So the first stage is pre-contemplation. So you are aware you're not as fit maybe, or as healthy as you were, but you've no intention of doing anything about it. A doctor has told you that you have high blood pressure, but you're in denial and hoping it goes away on its own. The next stage is contemplation. One day you realize you can no longer fit into your favorite jumper. You also notice that even simple tasks now make you breathless. You begin watching YouTube videos about people's health transformation. You can see that you need to change, but you aren't sure how to do it. And it feels overwhelming even to think about it. Next, we have preparation. You finally decide you're going to get healthy and start making plans to do it. You join a gym and buy some books about healthy eating. You commit to starting your new healthy lifestyle on the first day of next month. Next, we have action. On the first day of the month, you begin your new healthy lifestyle. After each successful month, you reward yourself with some new clothes to keep yourself motivated. Next, we have maintenance. Your confidence builds as your physical appearance starts to change for the better. You decide to participate in gym classes to find mo motivation and to find new friends to maintain your new healthy lifestyle. Finally, we have termination. After several years of maintaining your new lifestyle, you complete the model and you realise that being healthy is now just part of who you are. It's part of your identity now. You actually want to eat healthily and exercise. So before we wrap up, there are, are a few advantages and disadvantages associated with the model. So the model firstly provides a roadmap of the journey to get from where you are now 
to where you want to be. The model encourages you to anticipate and prepare for the bumps in the road that might occur along the journey. In terms of disadvantages, there's no clear cut way to know when you're ready to move from one stage to the next. And finally, the model doesn't take account of broader factors such as your physical, mental or environmental challenges. So in summary, it isn't quick or easy to change your behavior permanently. But you can think of the stages of change model as a how-to guide to changing your behavior or adopting a new habit. The key to successful change is to plan ahead, focus on progress, not perfection, and get back on track quickly after any setbacks. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.